Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can control your Android device using just a computer and Chrome. Well, kind of. Let's take a look. So to do this, you need a micro USB cable for your Android device. The actual phone you want to be using, in my case, the HTC One M8, and you need a computer running Chrome. Now, I don't know if it needs to be the latest version of Chrome, but it definitely won't hurt to get the newest version, and I will put a link in the description down below. What you then want to do is head over to the Chrome store and download an application called Visor. Now, it is currently still in beta, so do keep that in mind. Now before you do anything, you do want to plug in the USB into the actual computer itself and then plug in the micro USB into your Android device and then you're pretty much ready to go. Then what you want to do is load up Chrome, go into the apps in the top left hand corner and then you want to load Visor. Now once everything's all loaded, it will ask you to select a device. Now for whatever reason, my HTC One M8 just doesn't show up in this list, so you can click on find devices and it will then show a list of devices here and you can see that it's found my HTC. All you then need to do is click connect and then everything's going to load up and you'll see that your screen is now mirrored onto your actual computer. Now one thing that I would say is Visor's website and also any tutorials that you may see online from Visor themselves say that you need to install an application from the Play Store for Visor as well. Now when I actually started using Visor on my HTC One M8, it automatically installed the application onto my phone. Now I'm not too sure how it done that, but it got the app on there fine and everything was working fine. So as you can see here, you can scroll through Twitter on Phoenix. You can do pretty much anything you want on your device and it will be mirrored onto your computer. Now do keep in mind though that because it is in beta, you may come across some problems. And as you can see from this video, there is actually quite a lot of lag as well that you do need to take into account. Now one thing that I do like is the actual functionality that I'm going on to now with controlling your Android device from your PC. So as you can see, I've now put my HTC One down and I'm now using the mouse to actually navigate around my Android device. So as you can see here, I can go into the app drawer. You can actually use the multi-track functionality on a Mac as well. So you can actually scroll up and down in your app tray, for instance, and also between photos. And it's just a really cool way to interact with your device. You can also long press on the screen just by long tapping on the actual trackpad itself to bring up contextual menus. So again, if I want to go in here and change the wallpaper, then I can do very easily. And again, I'm controlling this all through the actual mouse on my computer. I'm not touching the phone at all. So again, it's a really cool thing that you can do and it actually works quite well, albeit with a bit of lag. Now, another cool feature is the fact that if I actually go into Google Now on my HTC One by tapping in the search bar, again, I can then put the device down and I can actually then use the keyboard built into my Mac to actually type and search for things very easily, which is an awesome feature. So what this means is if you are at your desk and you've got your phone plugged into your computer and you get a text message or a WhatsApp or an email and you need to reply, you don't actually need to touch the phone at all. So this is kind of a really cool way to actually interact with your device. And if you don't want to actually pick up the device and use it, or for instance, the battery is low and you're charging it, you don't really want to play around with it, then again, you can do everything through the actual PC itself. Now, as you can see, certain things don't actually lag. As long as your phone is kind of idle in terms of what it's doing, that it's not actually doing all that much, you can see in this video here that the lag itself is very minimal compared to something that we were looking at earlier. Now, I wouldn't say that this application is great for things like tutorials on Android. I would stick with something like Allcast or Reflector 2, which you can actually download, and I'll put links in the description down below for that. But this is more for those app developers who want to have a look at their applications, tinker around with a certain amount of things, or like I say, someone that just wants to use their device on their PC, but have to put up with some lag in the long run. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. If you guys have got any questions about this, again, put them in the comments section or on Google+, or on Twitter at Copper vs Glass, and I'll try my best to answer any questions that you've got. If you guys also want to get some more great content from Copper vs Glass, don't forget to subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video.